Hi, and what I'm going to do here is just take you through the Robin and Sherwood books that came out when the show was popular and a little bit after that. So the first one is the original Robin of Sherwood. This is the novelization of the first year. So you get six stories in this. And um, if you look carefully on the cover, you in the background, you can see a guy in a red jacket, and that is the director, Ian Sharp. There were two versions of this release. So the first one had an error. In uh, Seven Poor Nights from Acre, the Templar takes the sword Albion from Robin. But in the book, he uses it to free the thief Seaward about two pages later. So in the later version, that is amended. And then we have The Hounds of Lucifer. And this is a novelization of series two. It's got a nice picture of Michael Pride on the cover, which is from the first year. But it's, it's a nice retro design. And then we have the... Uh, the start of the Jason Connery episode. So we have the Hooded Man, and that's got a classic cover design with all the flames and stuff. And this is a novelization of three episodes. So you get Hanson and Power of Albion. So it's basically about how Robert becomes Robin Hood. And it's by Anthony Horowitz, so one of the writers on the show. And this, I think this was one of the first books he did. So it's actually, it's actually a pretty good novelization. And then we've got The Time of the Wolf. And I remember I spent ages trying to find this thing. It's called The Time of the Wolf, but it's actually Cross of St. Syricus, Rotokin, and The Time of the Wolf. But they kind of become one long story, and it's infinitely better than the, um, the TV version. And then we have, a couple of years later, we have The Complete Adventures of Robin Sherwood. And this was the first Robin Sherwood book I ever got. And it's got Jason on the cover because he was the last Robin. It's basically, it's just all of them put together, but it didn't have the missing episodes. Um, they only ever novelized the episodes that Richard Carpenter wrote for some reason or another. Yeah, it has a nice little epilogue at the end, sets up uh, what happened to everyone. And then we get to The King's Demon, and this is awesome. This is the first of the game books that came out for Robin and Sherwood, and it's it's basically what they did when they were trying to get the film off the ground was they started licensing things, so they were still around a little bit. Uh, these are brilliant, these game books. You had this one and the Sword of the Templar, and both of them were fantastic. The writers really nailed the characters and the feel of it. I mean, if you even if you're not a Robin or Sherwood fan, they were really good um, game books, so... Highly recommended. Um, they also did a sort of board game book, weirdly enough, for Robin or Sherwood. And I think that these came with the audios, but I'll have to double check on that. I'm pretty sure they do. Yeah, it's just a bunch of weird little board games you can play. And then we come to the infamous and at one point much desired Robin or Sherwood annual. This has a fantastic cover and very little else. No, that's not true. It has some nice photos in it. But generally, it's more of curio for fans than anything um, really worthwhile. It's a massively wasted opportunity. Um, for example, it um, it gives you character bios, but it completely forgets about much in the Zia. So it's just this kind of shoddy product that they threw together, but it's got a great cover. Right, a few years ago, we were lucky enough to get the Hooded Man books, and these were basically guides to the series in two volumes. You had the Michael one and the Jason one. The Michael one is more like a historical guide to the background to the series and it's fantastic. And the Jason one is basically, it goes a bit up into merchandise and stuff. So that is, they're both really good. So they're fantastic. One of the things is with Robin Sherwood is it went fairly international. So you got stuff from other lands, for example, these books are from uh, Belgium, I believe, and they are the weirdest things. If you look at the covers, they have literally nothing to do with what's going on on screen. And for some reason, Robin has a sword from Conan the Barbarian. So, crossover? I don't know. Um, this next one is from Sri Lanka, and it's, it's got a lovely bright cover. These ones, these next ones are from... Um, I don't know if they're from Belgium or Holland. 
but again, it's kind of this weird kind of art style, vaguely reminiscent of the uh, Puffin releases. But again, just just strange variations. And when you get a series as popular and as visual as Robin and Sherwood, it does tend to pop up in odd places. For example, in this one, they used a photo of Michael Pride and Judy Trott and the general Robin Hood book. For some reason, Robin and Sherwood always tended to make appearances in 80s fantasy. So, for example, in this one, The Stone and the Flute, you can pretty well see that Mr. Robin of Loxley is on the cover. For some reason, he has Nazir's um, legs. The reason is, is that the publicity photo they used was a, a cast photo, and uh, Robin's legs were obscured by much. So they just took Nazir's on and drew them. <laughs> um, this next one has um, someone who looks very reminiscent of Judy. And the last one is called Young Robin Hood. And again, they just used Michael Pride for inspiration. So this was kind of a quick guide to the books that came out or are vaguely linked to Robin and Sherwood and interesting little curios. Okay, thanks for that. Farewell.